Welcome back, everyone, to our lecture series, Math 1210, Calculus 1, for students at Southern Utah University. As always, I'm your professor today, Dr. Andrew Misseldine. We are in our final lecture for the series. Woo, 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 woo. Or, I mean, this is sad. Oh, no, I want to learn more calculus. Well, you that opportunity, of course, is presented in front of you, right? Um, as, as my calculus... Oculus One viewers who've been watching these last couple of videos, you'll actually notice me say some comments about how some of these videos, which are at the end of Calculus One, are actually the first couple of videos of Calculus Two. Uh, calculus Two actually picks up and continues the discussion of antiderivatives for a good long while. And so things like the fundamental theorem of calculus and this U substitution that we talked about in the previous video and in this video as well uh, are, are some of the, like the, the first moves that one wants to learn when playing the game called Calculus 2. So if you are dying to see more calculus, uh, feel free to, to click into the the, chan the the playlist I have for Calculus 2 videos. Um, even if you're not a Calculus 2 student, take a look at those. Uh, those are going to be pretty awesome as well. Uh, but for those who are trying to finish up Calculus 1, what I want to do is uh, provide some more examples of this technique, uh, which I call U-substitution. Uh, and so that this is the substitution rule from 5.5 in James Stewart's calculus textbook here. So we've seen some examples in the past where, in, in the past videos, for we, we wanted to identify a u, and that u we choose is typically a function inside of one, which parentheses often do that, but there are other uh, delimiters that tell us exactly who's inside who. Uh, so like, for example, you see this integral here, the integral of x times the square root of one minus x right there. And so you do see that there's this, um, one minus x inside of the square root. And so the square root often acts like these parentheses that there's a function inside of the square root. So if I were to see that, I would be inclined to set my u to be one minus x right there, because it's the inside function. But we have to calculate the inner derivative du, which in this case would just be negative dx, which I don't have the negative sign there, but we can always correct that but just by timing a double negative, negative on the inside, negative on the outside. Uh, in which case then your negative one that's right here combines with the dx together uh, to give you this du. And we can write our integral now as negative the integral of the square root of u du. But we still got this sort of like this elephant in the room right here. What do we do with the x? Now, I've cautioned you in the past that if you can't make the substitution work, then you're going to have to try something else, right? And that could be by trying a different substitution. Sometimes your first U substitution doesn't work. And if it doesn't work, that doesn't mean give up. just means maybe try something else. And after all, we can massage this problem a little bit. Because um, when you look at this right here, u equals 1 minus x, we often see that as an assignment. I'm deciding that u is equal to 1 minus x. That's fine, but it's also an equation. And as an equation, it can be manipulated. Uh, for example, we could subtract one from both sides and we end up with u minus one equals negative x. And if we times both sides by negative one, we end up with x is equal to one minus u. And this equation right here, we can substitute in above for the original expression, x there. And so when you do that, you end up with negative the integral, you're gonna get a one minus u, times u to the one half, aka the square root of u du. And so does this function right here put us in a simpler situation than we started with? The One of the guiding principles always about u substitution is that the, the value, the u you choose should always make the function simpler than it was. We were trying to integrate x times the square root of one minus x. Now we're trying to integrate one minus u times the square root of u. Does that make things a little bit better at all? Anything better? And I would say that we're in a better situation than we were because beforehand we had a one minus X inside of the square root, but now the one minus U is outside the square root and we have just a monomial inside of the square root. We're now in a situation where this square root of U, we could distribute onto these pieces. And if we distribute them, we end up with negative the integral of U to the one half minus U to the three halves uh, DU like so. And by the power rule and the linearity properties of antiderivatives, we can calculate that antiderivative. Absolutely. So our, I would say our U substitution is a success because it put us in a situation that was easier to calculate than we had before. And so using the power rule for U to the one half, the power will raise to three halves. You add one to it, divide by three halves. For the next one, we raise the power by one. So it becomes five halves. 
then divide by five halves. And don't forget your plus C. Uh, and so then if you divide by fractions, of course, you're just multiplying by the reciprocal. So you're going to get negative two thirds U to the three halves uh, plus, I'm distributing the negative sign throughout there, plus two fifths U to the five halves plus a constant. And then remove the U and go back to the original variable X there. You're going to get negative two thirds times the times one minus x raised to the three halves power, and then add to that two fifths, one minus x raised to the five halves power plus a constant. And so this gives us our antiderivative right there. U substitution should always be used to simplify the integral into something that's easier to, to take an antiderivative of. But after all, this assignment of U is also an equation. If you can manipulate the equation, you potentially could use that to your advantage to what makes look what my, to make the U substitution work. Uh, let me give you another example of this one. This is a little bit more involved here, but same basic idea. Because we have a one plus X squared inside of the square root, uh, I would be inclined to set one plus X squared as my inner function U. And then your inner derivative will be 2x dx right there. And so if we partition this a little bit, uh, we're going to need a 2 over 2 for the coefficient. Uh, moving things around a little bit, we end up with a an 1 half that sits in front, an x to the fourth that we don't know what to do with yet. We get a square root of 1 plus x squared. And then we have this 2x dx. So this portion right here becomes your u, and this portion right here becomes your du. But what do you do with the x to the fourth, right? Well, the idea is, again, your assignment for u can actually be, it's an equation that you can manipulate. Like if you subtract one from both sides, notice you'll get x squared equals u minus one. And then making the recognition, well, I have to get x to the fourth. If I square both sides, x to the fourth will equal u minus one squared. Make that substitution in above. And when you do that, your integral becomes one half the integral of the x to the fourth became a u minus one squared. The square root of one plus x squared becomes a u to the one half. And then the two x dx becomes a du. Is this a function for which we have a better chance at integrating? Well, when you look at that, even if it's not easy, the question is it doable, right? u minus one squared. I could foil that out. I could foil that. And if you did that, uh, you would end up with a u squared minus 2u plus 1 times that by u to the 1 half du. Well, that u to the 1 half, I could distribute, just like the last example, you could distribute that through. And then you're going to get this polynomial-like expression, 1 half in front. You're going to end up with, so when you distribute the u to the 1 half, you're adding 1 half to each of the powers. So you're going to get u to the 5 halves minus 2 times u to the 3 halves uh, plus just u to the 1 half du, like so. And those are things I can anti-differentiate because I just have a, com a combination of powers of u. Uh, so using the anti-derivative rules here for the power rule, we'll increase each power by one. So five, five halves becomes seven halves, divide by uh, seven halves. Um, the next one, you're gonna get two u, you're gonna raise the power to be the five halves, divide by five halves. And then lastly, your u's power will raise to 3 halves, divide by 3 halves, and add a constant here. And every time you divide by the fraction, you really could have multiplied by a reciprocal. And here I'm also going to distribute the 1 half through on all of these things. So we're going to end up with 1 half times 2 sevenths times u to the 7 halves. Then we're going to get negative 1 half times two-fifths, uh, and then there's another, of course, two u to the five-halves. And then lastly, we're gonna get plus one-half times two-thirds times u to the three-halves plus a constant right here. And simplify where we can. You'll notice that the one-half cancels with a lot of the twos that are in the numerator. And so you get all that cancellation right there. And then substitute back in the original expression for u which it fell off the screen right here, but remember that was x squared plus one. So in the end, we have a one seventh, one plus x squared to the seven halves power. Next, we're gonna get negative two fifths, one plus x squared 
to the 5 halves power. And then finally, we are going to get a plus 1 third times 1 plus x squared to the 3 halves power plus an arbitrary constant. And this, of course, gives us the antiderivative we were looking for. A little bit more involved, but that u substitute, that's u assignment we did earlier, can be massaged as an equation to pick up the pieces that we couldn't do beforehand. Uh, so we'll talk some more about antiderivatives using u substitution in the subsequent videos. Click on the link to see those, and I'll see you next time, everyone.